Hi, I'm Mikey Jeanson, a gameplay programmer with a background in Unreal Engine and C++. I've helped make several games, including Your Average Bear, but now I'm a full-time UEFN developer, and this is Verse Boost. Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the Ticks Per Second series. If you haven't seen part one, I highly encourage you to do so. We will be building on the foundations from that video. First things first, let's talk about immediate and async expressions. An expression in verse can either be immediate or asynchronous. This describes the time an expression can take to evaluate relative to simulation updates. An immediate expression evaluates with no delay meaning that the evaluation will complete within the current simulation update. So you can see here is an immediate function with a bunch of immediate expressions. All of these will be within one simulation update. An async expression has the possibility of taking time to evaluate, but doesn't necessarily have to. Here's some examples of some popular async expressions. We've got move to, await, sleep, Async expressions may or may not complete in the current simulation update. So if you, you know if you have to use spawn, that's an async expression, and or it can be within a suspends context. But the thing we're going to be talking about is spacing out work over several simulation updates. So these are the important questions that we need to be asking when we're going through our code base. Does this expression or function need to evaluate during this simulation update? Or can it be over multiple updates? And how can we space out that work over multiple updates? What is the correct amount of work that we're doing per update? And now let me introduce you to your new best friend, Sleep Zero. If you're unfamiliar, Sleep Zero will wait until the next ticker update to continue working. So right from the documentation, I grabbed this. It says waiting until the next update is especially useful in a loop of a coroutine that needs to do some work every update, and this yields to other coroutines so that it doesn't hog a processor's resources. So if you have something that's doing a lot of work, use Sleep Zero to break up that work over multiple updates. And in that same lane of thinking, your main job is to find out how many ticks you can spread your coroutine over. If it's important to the gameplay, take less breaks, you know? If it's independent of the gameplay, take more breaks. You sleep zero more often. I've found personally that about 500 distance calculations will cause the ticks per second to drop under 30. So I would say it yield often. So if you wanna get complex, you can stagger your work so that it's skipping some ticks. So you maybe do zero and five, and then another task is working on one and six, and so on and so forth. And then you could use a priority queues if you really want to get into the weeds for a custom task scheduler, and that custom task scheduler is managing all the tasks themselves. Personally, I would just fall back on this. If it's important, take less breaks. If it's independent, take more breaks. Let me show you guys an example. So this is our vehicle spawner manager from Verse Boost episode four. And you can see here that I'm using sleep zero right here to allow a tick. And that's because I have this variable vehicles managed per tick. You know, it's a constant. That's why it's all caps. And every 10 vehicles looks like I'm taking a break and I'm allowing a tick. So lastly, we have this example device. We just have a bunch of methods here that are going to take some time. And if take breaks is enabled, we're going to be yielding um, and allowing a tick. And if it's not, we're not going to be allowing a tick. And I'll show you guys just how different the performance is when you're taking breaks versus not. So in game, you can imagine, you can check in the top left, we have a ticks per second counter there, and it's real slow, right? We're getting three ticks per second. Not good. But you'll notice that our ticks per second immediately gone up. It looks like I'm not at 30, so I could optimize further. Last thing I want to talk about guys is if you aren't getting 30 ticks per second, then you need to make some changes. You need to spread out that work across multiple ticks and that's just how it has to be because 30 ticks per second is the industry standard for multiplayer games and players aren't going to want anything less. And you don't want to just be barely under the bar. You definitely want to have some headroom because you never know when you're going to have a spike. Players might do something that causes the game to take a little bit longer than normal and you don't want to have it dipping consistently under 30 ticks per second. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed part one and part two of this video. Let me know if it was helpful for it to be split up in parts. And if you need some further clarification, I'll be down in the comments. And you can always hit me up on Twitter. My DMs are open. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.